Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and in the modern age, most countries tend to grow or shrink in very predictable ways. They'll grow like Canada, where they slowly add states and territories to the Union, slowly building the federation that you know today, or they'll shrink like Pakistan did, where half of the country, East Pakistan, decides that it wants to be an independent thing, and it makes a flag and a government of its own, uh, splitting away to form Bangladesh, effectively splitting Pakistan in two. However, this isn't really building a country from scratch, and it's also very hard to extinguish a country altogether because you can't just create and destroy countries at will. However, in Europe, Poland has been at one point one of the largest countries in the world and it's also stopped existing more than one time because of the action of rivaling European powers. In fact, if you look at its location in Europe, you can see that surrounded by Germany and Russia and the Ottomans and everything else, it's a very rough situation to be in, but the Polish people have done some crazy things and uh, that is why they are the most changing country in terms of its borders in history. In fact, you need to see exactly what's going on there. If you like uh, countries which have changed and shrunk, Poland is the use case for just what is happening here. And let me explain everything, starting with the first fact you'll learn, which is, did you know Poland is filled with Polish people, also known as Poles? That's right, there are lots of Poles in Poland, except, wow, it's a different type of Pole to this. This is actually what the Poles look like, and the Poles live in Poland, except not exclusively. Because of the fact that their borders have changed so much, many other countries are filled with Polish people. In fact, here is a map of Belarus by Polish percentage, you can see that there are lots of parts of Belarus which are majority Polish or plur you know, largest plurality Polish, which is pretty crazy by itself. And then you look at uh, Lithuania and you see the exact same thing is true. Like imagine being uh, ethnically a thing and living outside your own borders because of the craziness of history. That is something which lots of Polish people feel. In the case of Belarus, literally living outside the EU. And if you lived outside the country you were born in, you know what would be great? Perhaps getting a VPN. Wow, you can learn more about Surfshark the, the VPN sponsor of today's video later on, probably. I feel like that's how sponsorships work. But no, more seriously, the reason that Poland's borders have changed so much and the reason so many Polish people live outside the country is because of this map right here. Did you know uh, the, the vast, <laughs> pretty much every country in Europe seems to have made your, your Poland at some point. It is really quite a crazy thing. And yeah, as you can see, lots and lots and lots of invasions, lots of people who want a little bit of Poland or maybe something they have. And the fact that they exist today is really a show of Poland's resilience. In fact, uh, you might be thinking like, wait a minute, how? Uh, the, the, the more impressive thing is like, so nowadays uh, Poland looks like this and they don't have any major border disputes. Again, so many countries still have these century old disputes which are running today. Poland basically doesn't have border disputes. I mean, they have uh, border issues of Belarus sending as many migrants as they can over the border trying to like cause uh, it, you know, issues in the EU with their, their border policy or whatever. You know, they have issues in that sense of the word. However, in general, uh, Poland does not have border issues, but they do have border issues in the sense of, my God, has there been some crazy stuff. But yeah, just to take you a step back and to remind you that like, every one of these border issues has some sensitivity behind it. Poland is a country which is kind of built on this resilience to all of these people around them, all of these neighboring countries which don't want them to exist in some state. And uh, so I wanted to show you just, okay, here's, here's the Wikipedia page for Poland. Just just so you know these facts are true, because you know, there's never any lies on Wikipedia. Um, the, the Republic of Poland, a uh, country in Central Europe, wow, it's 38 million, fifth most populous member state, but also, uh, I wanted to say about the fact that their anthem is called Poland is not yet lost. Okay, you know, imagine your anthem link being literally that, right? It's a pretty good anthem, by the way, I have to say. Pretty big fan. So long as we leave, live, what foreign force has taken from us? Seriously, the third line in their national anthem is what the foreign force has taken from us. And then the fourth line, we shall retrieve with a saber. That is the level of like, yes, their nation ident national identity is built on the idea that other countries keep trying to take stuff from them and they will take it back with a saber. Not a lightsaber, sadly. Apparently it's a long sword. But still, it's 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 a cool thing, right? In fact, the capital of Poland, uh, it's called Warsaw. And my god, is there, is there a more appropriate name for a, for a capital, right? Uh, the city has been bombed many a time. And the fact that any of it still exists... In fact, there are still beautiful parts of it which look exactly how it used to. is kind of a nutty thing on its own right. L look at this. This is beautiful European city. All, all the culture and heritage, etc. Except let's now go and let's explain all the times that Poland didn't exist. And where are we? 
we now? So with that said, um, let, let's go into this. Let's expect, so first of all, here's a fun map I found on Europe, on imaginary maps, of what Europe would look like if Poland had any of their borders from history. This is only taking 12 examples off it. I, I couldn't help but looking for all of them. Here is maximum Poland. This is what Europe could look like if Poland never lost anything. There would not be a modern day Belarus. In fact, there probably wouldn't be most of a modern day Ukraine. It is crazy just how much bigger it really is. But then also, there's, uh, you know, there's other forms of Poland. There's Poland that doesn't exist multiple times and just, oh. That, you know, I feel as though Europe is missing a Poland in this one. Uh, you can see that there's small Poland, you can see there's medium Poland, you can see there's uh, effectively Belarus, but there's a lot of variants of uh, Poland that can exist, and I think it's very fun to look at this. But if you want to see all the variants of Poland, here is a 2 minute and 51 second video. <laughs> Seriously, there are this many variants. So, 1635, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. This is arguably the earliest, like, modern state you can look at with modern day borders, because literally Poland goes back further the concept of borders like many places do but like this is this is like okay so we go from 1635 six you can see every single time like okay there's not too much happening and then oh it's all gone and then okay no it's it's all good now we're like building building back into something right and there we go polish lithuanian commonwealth it looks a bit different before and we've lost a bit from the south and we lost a bit to the east and we gained that south bit back but uh oh and everything's fine still wow everything's still going very well in the polish lithuanian commonwealth a little bit of changes to our neighbors and okay more change and oh no not germany and germany and russia from the east and west coming in and taking some of the country thank god this is a one time occurrence in 1795 thank god that the duchy of warsaw which comes back by the way slowly builds into the congress of poland so as the grand duchy of poznan Free city of Krakow, slowly, okay, no, okay, not coming back, oh, no, not, not coming back, at, okay, and all gone from Germany and Russia. Well, thank God that's like a two-time occurrence, like, never again will Germany and Russia uh, be able to do something as heinous as taking away Poland's existence and gobbling it up themselves. Never again will you see such a thing happen uh, because, you know, there is no Poland. But fortunately, after World War I, you know what it is agreed on? The, the Polish people should have their nation state. And so here comes Poland. We're back. And there is never again going to be a situation where Germany uh, you know, has, or Russia have anything to do with this. And so, as you can see, things are nice. Poland's all built together. Lithuania is no longer considered like Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. It's sad, but you know, it's uh, two separate countries. They're doing real, real good together. And uh, oh yeah, everything's gonna be so nice. Look, look at these tiny border changes. This is a sign of peace in Europe because everyone knows after World War One. Ooh, the USSR just formed. That seems concerning. You know, what? thankfully the USSR is ruled by very reasonable people. I don't think they're going to want to get involved in a war. They're not going to want to do something with Poland because they're such good friends. Uh, that little military excursion on the west of uh, <laughs> west of Poland's looking kind of concerning. But there's a big declaration that they will not invade Poland. I mean, they've they've promised they won't, and so what what are they going to do? There's uh, and it's it's gone again. <laughs> and uh, you know, here's here's the craziest bit in my opinion. Ignoring what happens in World War Two, where what is now nowadays Poland gets uh, gobbled east and west. Look at how much. Because the Soviet Union basically controlled all of Eastern Europe after World War II. Look how much, so the, so the Soviets gobble up Poland, which looks like this. Then when they reform Poland after the war, trying to look like the good guys, it looks like this. You might notice that, wait, wait. So Poland was here, and then they made Poland here. What, Poland was, was here, and they made it over here. Yes, the USSR took a ton of land from Poland, then gave some of Poland's land back, then gave them some of Germany, and they're like, yep. That's a Poland now. We did it. We've officially done it. And because of the uh, the very long-lived existence of the USSR and the fact that during these times people were expelled and put back in the self, this is just what modern-day Poland is. Never has a country... And then here's the breakup of the USSR. And then, do you want to see the last of this? Because I don't know what happens after 1991. Ah, oh, apparently. There we go, 1993. There we go, we're good. But you can see that, like, yeah... The situation in Poland is one of neighboring powers continuously just deciding your existence on a whim and also literally redrawing the borders, again, just kind of for fun more than anything else it seems like. It is a crazy country. Like, if we go back to this and then we compare it to this, you can really just uh, get a feel for the... <laughs> also, that, it, you can get a feel for just how much is really going down 
uh, with Poland and their history. And you can also start to understand why they are so protective today. Modern day countries, if you're in the, the United States of America, uh, you know, a country which is surrounded by ocean, yet they're military dominant over any neighboring country. You know, the, the biggest country nearby is what, like Mexico, maybe? You got Canada, which is big physically, but not population wise. And then there's lots of countries which individually you could take on and all together you could take on. It's like, there is never gonna be a threat to like, what if Florida stops being a part of the union? Uh, it's, it's just not a problem you have if you're in the US. Same with even uh, as far west as like, um, as far west as, if we're being honest, like a Norway, or I guess that's not West. As far, as far, yeah, most of the world, you don't have to deal with the idea of what if your country stops existing tomorrow? You know, the UK is pretty protected. We're an island. It's unlikely that Brighton's gonna vote to join France anytime soon. However, when you are Poland, you are, you, you can't just do this utopian future building. You are aware that your country is built on the things that you set. And so that's a very different like view towards the world. In fact, uh, Polish people around the world uh, are a thing that, uh, again, like they're usually viewed as like conservative in that way. But that is a, that is something that maybe makes sense when you think about their nation's history. And so with that said, first thing I wanted to show you is this map which shows the size of how big Poland used to be versus how big Poland is now. Poland, sure, it's the fifth biggest country in Europe by by population, but is it any is it anywhere near as big as it used to be? No, it's not. Very fun fact right there. Uh, but the other thing I want to show you is this map. This is the world map of Polish diaspora. Uh, diaspora maps are really interesting ways to help you understand like historic migration paths. And um, yeah, the fact that there are 10 million people uh, plus 10 million, plus more than 10 million people from Poland living in the United States. Okay, it's a big number. There's over a million people from Poland living in Canada, uh, France, Germany, uh, also Brazil. You know what? This, this is something, okay. When I first learned that there were more than a million Polish people living in Brazil, I had to look into it a bit further and I was like, what's, what's going on here? And there's a whole page for Polish Brazilians. There is, there is a category of person in Brazil called Polish Brazilians, and it's not like there's just a few of them. It's like, oh yeah, there is three million. What, what is that as a percentage of Brazil's population? It's 10% of the Polish population living over, but like Brazil's, like what, what is happening? More than 1%, like 1.5% of Brazilians are Polish Brazilians? What's the scoop with that? That is very strange, but um, yeah, apparently the even crazier thing is because they, uh, a lot of them immigrated in the late 19th century, they immigrated from a part of Poland that is not Poland anymore. You know, if you, if you, if you left uh, the nation of Poland in, okay, let's, let's go back to 19, uh, 18, I don't know, 1919. If you left a part of Poland in 1919, maybe, uh, maybe you gotta pick a different time for this one, huh? Back when they still existed. But if you, if you leave uh, this and then nowadays your homeland is here, where are you from? Again, this is one of those things that you don't really get to think about with modern day countries. But yeah, uh, it's it's one of those weird situations. And it makes you realize that, yeah, your bo borders changing so frequently and so much leads to situations like, yeah, they're classified as Russians uh, because it's just easier to, to do things that way. Um, yeah, did you know uh, that there are Polish people in so many countries because they've been forcibly exiled from their own country? And so that's why, in my opinion, the fact that they're the fifth most populous EU country, the fact that there are still 40 million Poles um, managing to resist the, the population decline that is hitting so many countries around them. Uh, the, like, look, look at Romania from 22 million in 1994 to, 29, uh, to 19 million in uh, the modern age. Uh, same with like Bulgaria or Latvia or basically all of the countries in Eastern Europe in the EU having like tragic declines. So, and even Hungary, look at that. So the fact that they're like staying steady on this stuff, actually very impressive. The fact that their GDP is growing at like nutty rates, uh, very, very impressive. The fact that a country can come rebirth from the ashes and quadruple its GDP in literally 25 years, very crazy things. And uh, yeah, I wanted to use this uh, as a reminder. What will you say when your child asks, why didn't you invest in Eastern Poland? This is this is just a, a dumb meme I wanted to throw in the video. But no, more seriously, Poland is this fun example of what happens when you take a country and you destroy it and you build it again and then you destroy it again and you build it again. And um, yeah, it's one of those places that isn't really appreciated enough. Like a lot of people know that like you go, you can go there and you can see like, oh, there's like some salt mines and there's some, 
But like there's the, <laughs> you know, the salt mines of Poland. Let me tell you about the salt mines of Poland. But um, yeah, it's 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 a fun little place. And before we go, because I mentioned Warsaw now, I want to also say the other thing, because uh, Poland's l there's lots of positive things to say about Poland. I feel as though, as far as pronunciation goes, for a Latin alphabet, they might be one of the hardest countries, because they do natively use the the Latin script. But looking at these place names, I think it, let's go through and let's try and pronounce every single major Polish city. I feel like I've said too many complimentary things about the Polish. I've got to balance it out and be like, says Stetin. Then this is Bydgoszk. Bydgoszcz. <laughs> like S Z C Z. It's four four hard pronounced syllables in a row right there. Looks like a pretty city, by the way. We got Poznan. Poznan. We got uh, Warsaw. Warsaw. Bialystok. We got Rocklaw. Szekacztokiwa. <laughs> like it's so impossible, right? Katowice. Now, okay, we got some stuff. Rzeszow. And of course, we've got loads. I, I, we've got loads of loads right here. Look how big it is. There is so much loads to go around. Poland has lots of loads for you. All you gotta do is come, come check them out. In fact, uh, Poland also has McDonald's with a drive-thru. I mean, sorry, a car, car wash. Is this a, ah, uh, this is a, a BP actually. Oh, that's fun. Um, anyway, they, they have the same wild bean cafe thing in different countries. Also, look at the pricing on that stuff. Wait, oh, it's it's in Polish, Lottie. I was like. Jesus, look at the look at the prices of uh, of fuel in Poland. I I don't know wh what measurement that's per, but I know that's expensive. Wait, let's let's get around here. There we go, four thirty eight. That actually can't be in Zloty, can it? One sec. Let's let me let's just Google. What is four four point three eight Zloty in euro? Ah, it's very cheap to buy buy fuel in Poland today. You know, go get yourself some some petrol. Auto gas is only one point seven four. I have lots of questions about this. Anyway, I hope that uh, uh, I hope that this little insight into Poland and the crazy changing situation helps you appreciate it a bit more. Because um, you know, the when when Poland joined the EU uh, and alongside the whole batch of Eastern European countries, there was this huge disparity between them. I feel as though Poland is that like prime example of has worked to overcome the disparity as much as possible. And so even though there is still one now, like Poland is at 594 billion USD when you compare it to like. Even like a poorly performing Western European country like Italy, it's like ah yeah, that's that they've got they've got slightly fewer people in Italy, right? Maybe not. A similar number of people in Italy. They're probably fourth in the EU by population, but they've got triple the the GDP. But still, it's the fact that when compared to neighboring countries, when compared to all this stuff, they're doing pretty well. On pretty pretty much every statistic you can find, uh, Poland's doing well, uh, and uh, it's kind of cool to me. That it shows the stability of modern times. That even a country that exists here has Ukraine, you know, has Ukraine and has Belarus, two countries of very active conflict. I mean, literally, not active conflict necessarily, but active situations happening. The fact that a country like that can still uh, hold its own and still grow and still uh, exist great, given the fact that most countries hate, uh, hate uncertainty, most investors hate uncertainty. It's, uh, it's very interesting and very cool to see. Speaking of cool things to see, uh, let's talk more about our sponsor today, Surfshark. Did you know Surfshark is a VPN that will allow you to go to other countries and then like, it's like magically as if you're there. You know, have you ever wanted to, yeah, uh, you, you know, okay, wait, here's a, here's a representation. If you wanna say, watch Netflix movies, which aren't available in your country, but are somewhere else, it's like Street View where I can look at this restaurant, but imagine I could eat their food. That's what Surfshark VPN allows you to do. It allows you to eat the food out of foreign restaurants, except even better than that, because food is food, food only lasts for a few minutes, but watching TV series that aren't available in your country, like for instance, uh, if you're in the UK, like I am, you wanna watch American show, like I think the Office US, not available in the UK. Office US is available in the US. Oh, I love watching that on Netflix. I enabled, I enabled Surfshark, turn it on, and wow, now I'm watching some prime time content. Uh, all the other way around, there's lots of um, shows which are uh, in the US, they're considered like, you know, TNT or some network that doesn't exist in the UK. So in the UK, they're considered Netflix originals. Snowpiercer, great example. Love it, it's a, it's, it's a Netflix original here, despite the fact that they don't make it. And so if you wanna watch all sorts of shows which aren't available in your country's Netflix, there are all sorts of fun examples of this. Um, and also, if you travel, and you know, like, let's be honest, traveling's back on the menu now, 
Uh, see, look at that, eating food in a foreign country. If you travel to, say, China, or let's be honest, any country where you're not so trustworthy of the regime, uh, maybe taking your data and storing it, you can use a VPN to get around that. In fact, for China, which is the, the go-to example, I literally needed personally to have a VPN in Shanghai to access YouTube. YouTube is blocked in China. Just, you know, it's Western... Uh, imperialist scum social media and so if you want to access any social media while you go get Surfshark on a phone if you want to watch TV shows where you don't live use Surfshark there I whenever I do a sponsorship I make clear that I'm only going to talk about like things that I'm actually familiar with and these are two great reasons to have a VPN make sure if you want to get one to go to surfshark.com slash toycat uh, you can get the the deal the deal for Surfshark is it's 83 percent off if you uh, if you go and download it using that link. And it's not just 83% off, it's 83% off plus three months free. And I thought to myself, well, if it's 83% off, it's not gonna be, no, it's like it's like two pounds of, I, I paid a lot more than two pounds 13 on my last VPN uh, per month. So yeah, use surfshark.com slash toycat and get your, your get your get your 83% off and three months free. I, I'm, I'm using the three months free. I'm getting the 83% off. I'm enjoying that. And maybe you can too. Or maybe you can, I don't know, not do that. I guess it's your decision. Like you can you can always not subscribe to channels you like too. It's the modern way to do things. You know what, just because you benefit from a product doesn't mean you have to use it. But, you know, probably a good idea to do so. Can I say in an ad read, you know, you can benefit from a product but don't buy it. You know, I, I think I can. So, hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you to Surfshark for letting me actually talk about a product I like in a way I want to, comparing it to eating food from foreign restaurants rather than rather than doing the boring ad read. Oh yeah, look at look at this by the way. I like these little little arcades. It's it's a cool thing. Look look at that. I've been to Warsaw before. I need to i I wanna do like a cross European country road trip at some point. Yeah, I've gotta you gotta take advantage of that driving skill at some point. And uh I gotta I gotta include some Poland in there. I've also got I, like I'm I only wanna do it because flying to Southeast Europe is still expensive. So just like rather than flying to each of these countries and spending a you know hundred something quid each flight each way, why don't I just uh chain together a whole trip, drive through all of them. It's a good idea, am I right? Speaking of good ideas, um, leaving this video, it's over now. Second channel, don't care, bye.